Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 59. Book of Isaiah uh, chapter 59. And I'm going to read a few verses from there. And uh, when you're there, say amen. amen. All right, let's go to verse 1. Verse 1, behold the Lord, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that he cannot say, neither his ear heavy, that he cannot hear. Verse 2, but your iniquities have separate between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, that he will not hear. Verse 3, I want you to. Pay attention to this. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perverseness. Let's, uh, let's go down to uh, verse 4. Let's go to, all the way to 5. None calleth for justice, not any pleaded for truth. They trust is in vanity and they speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They hatch cockatrice, cockatrice eggs or a snake eggs, other translations, and weep the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dies. And that which is crushed, break it out into a viper. Wow, that's some of the strangest creatures, isn't it? But that's what the Bible says. Verse 14, in judgment is turned away backward. Listen to this. In judgment is turned away backward. In justice it standeth afar off. For truth is falling in the street. And equity cannot enter. Verse 15. Yeah, truth fought, faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Let's jump to verse 20 and 21 to conclude our reading. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion. And unto them that turn from transgressions in Jacob, saith the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed seed saith the Lord from henceforth and forever. I'd like to take this text here today and just preach you under the subject a snake X. A snake X. Kind of weird, kind of strange, but if you're going to eat an omelet, never eat snake eggs omelet. Bible says you will die. That's what the Bible says. Are you ready to pray? Yes. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now. I'm going to ask you to put fresh thoughts in my, in my mind and put anointed words in my mouth. That you have strengthened my body and you let me speak what the Holy Ghost spoke to me a few weeks. Who knows? Two, three months ago now, God and I've been mean, withholding this word, but I feel like today is the day. Let me bring it out and what you put it in my heart. Give me liberty. Give me anointing. God, uh, prepare the minds and the hearts of your people. They are here today. Those that are watching by a webcast, wherever they are, let the seed of your word fall in good ground and let it bring forth a hundredfold. And I pray all of these things in your precious name, the precious name of Jesus. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. And God's people shout, Amen. 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 You may be seated. Thank you for standing. 
And you know what's the procedure here. If you are sitting in the bottom portion and you need to go out for whatever reason, when you come back to the sanctuary, please take a seat in the second level. We don't want nobody to be distracted down here. We don't want distractions in the sanctuary. I'm going to be concise. I won't be lengthy this morning. I never lengthy in the morning service. But I think if you give me your attention, I can move on in this message and let the Holy Ghost speak to your heart. This is an extremely important chapter in the book of Isaiah for the, time, for the times that we are living in. He started off by painting a picture of what society looks like when he turned its back on God. He says your hands are stained with blood. In 1972, uh, some of you perhaps were not even born yet, but in 1972, some of you others, the, the older people here, remember Roe versus Wade. Abortion was approved by the Supreme Court. It was confirmed that if a woman was not willing to give birth to her child, she had the right to abort the child. There was a lot of people in the streets in the White House, Washington, D.C. with signs saying legalize abortion. And they did. So suddenly, the United States of America, America's hands, became a stain with blood. Since then, over 50, over 50 million babies have been aborted. And we find ourselves in a time when the hands of these nations are staying with innocent blood. And it is so unconceivable because listen to this. If you crushed an, egg, an, an, an eagle egg... The penalty is one year imprisonment or $10,000 fine. In fact, I told him to put me a picture of that eagle there. And there's all the stuff. I read it this morning. And he says right on the bottom, if you cross an eagle egg, you'll be put in prison for one year or you can pay a penalty of $10,000. Listen to this. An eagle egg is more valuable than a human baby in this society that has turned its back on God. Your hands, the prophet Isaiah says, your hands are polluted with blood, are stained with blood. Verse 5, they hatch as snake eggs and weave the spider's web. And those that ate those snake eggs omelets die. And those that crush break out into a viper. The snake eggs are representing here in the Bible de deadly, evil men's philosophy. Hatched by the granddaddy serpent himself, Satan, in the garden. From the incubators of hell. All kinds of lies and deceptions. All religions. All the doctrines lead to heaven. That's a snake X. You hear me now? You were not created by God. You are the final evolution of a lesser being. You came from an ape. That's a snake egg. You were not born with a defined gender. You can choose your gender. You can be whoever or whatever you want to be. That's a snake egg. You don't have to marry a person of the opposite sex. Same-sex marriage is just as normal. It is just as unacceptable as any other thing. Brothers and sisters, those are snake eggs. 
and many people and nations under the sun today have swollen those snake eggs, omelets, and as a result, those philosophies are destroying our generation. Our young people, you children, our children, the Bible calls them doctrines of demons. And if you eat those snake eggs, you will die spiritually. Now, I want you to notice the strategic of the enemy. I want to, I really want you to take notice of this. He first, the enemy, the devil, he first poisons the mind. He first poisons the mind. You can live your life any way you want to live. You can do whatever you want to do. You can go wherever you want to go. You don't have to obey. You don't have to follow to the T, the teachings of the Bible. After all, everybody is going to go to heaven. And all those doctrines of sanctification and all those doctrines that they preach you there of holiness and separation from the world system are all doctrines with no relevance in the 21st century. Listen, if you don't watch it, even apostolic believers will make a snake eggs omelets. And they start eating them. And it will poison your mind. And your thoughts will become corrupted and evil. And you will end it up living just like the world lives. Dead, dead, dead and spiritually. You won't be able not even to lift up your arms and say, Thank you Jesus anymore. Because you are poisoned with deadly things. In 1980, the Ten Commandments were ordered out of, out of from all public places, including the schools and government buildings. Today, no verse from the Bible or any other Christian material is allowed to be exposed in any of these of this public buildings. The teachers in public schools are beginning to teach things contrary to what we believe from the Word of God. Like the theory of evolution, the theory of the Big Bang, I believe those teachings are as snake eggs hatched by Satan that are imparted in the mind of this new generation, our children. That is what is so important for you parents to get up to children, wake them up in the morning on Sunday and bring it to the church, bring it to Sunday school, let the teachers teach them the word of God. You got to bring the family to the house of the Lord. Because their minds have been poisoned by this kind of teachers in public schools. Hallelujah. In the 1970s, uh, and once again, many of you, we're not even alive yet. But in the 70s, here in the United States, many of the school teachers it started the day with prayer in public schools. It was normal thing. It was nothing strange. It was nothing rare or eccentric. It was a normal thing that the school teacher will ask the, 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 all the pupils and all the, 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 the children there, let's bow your heads, we're going to pray. It was normal. The children in those days salute the flag of the United States, putting their right hand on their, uh, in their heart and, the, and the, do the Pledge of Allegiance. What's happening now? This generation is swallowing snake eggs. And we got all these 
protests and we got all these things against the flag, against, and I'm telling you, our, our society here in the nation is going crazy. They're eating a snake eggs omelets. And it's poison their mind. It's poison their spirit. And I come this morning to, to call on this congregation to every mother and to every father. You better wake up and you better fall in love with Jesus all over again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boy, I feel a burden this morning. I preached with a heavy burden yesterday up there in Connecticut. And I feel the same burden here today. And I want you to notice that. The sins, the sins, the fatal trap is when those eggs hatch. And when they hatch, they put evil thoughts in your mind. And then things begin to happen. Things like you pull away from God. You quit coming to church. Families and marriage begin to separate and to talk about divorce. You go your way, I go my way, and the children will go their way. So lives are destroyed. Dreams and destinies and peoples are destroyed by sin. Sin is not your friend. Listen, young people and adults here today, sin is your enemy enemy the wages of sin is dead don't eat those snake eggs verse 5 right there says they weave the spider's web like a spider satan weaves a sticky trap in the path of the of the old and of the young Moms and dads, business people, educated people, and he catches them. He weaves it with size of pornography, and he put it right there on your phone. Right there. Watch out. It's a pile of web. Oh, yeah. He weaves the webs of adultery and fornication. And you begin to practice those things and you look as, as a normal thing. The devil got you. Sin got you. You begin to lie. You begin to gossip. You begin to become bitter. You see homosexuality as a normal lifestyle, an acceptable lifestyle. Listen, there's a spider web. I say there's a spider web. The victims... The victims get entangled in those webs. And they cannot get out of them because the whole body, soul, and spirit is entangled in those webs of sin. And you know what the spider does when those insects get trapped? He eats them. He eats the life out of them. Once you see the that, that spider went on the corner and that little fly begins to just kind of look and go around and finally it's so attractive because that spider went is magnetic, it's colorful and, and so the little fly or the little butterfly gets so attractive and once it gets entangled, she cannot get out of it. And what the spider does who's hiding in the corner just like the devil comes out and eats the life out of them. It is the inside. The body or, or the shell of the insect might be still there. But all the insides are gone. Because the spider sucks the insides of his victims. And that's exactly what Satan does to the believer. Some of you are here looking fine on the outside. But on the inside, you don't have any joy. You don't have any peace. You don't have any hope. You cannot even say hallelujah. You can barely lift up your hands. You cannot even say, Jesus, I love you anymore. 
because the devil has sucked out all your integrity, all your peace, all your joy. And the only thing you got left is the shell. What you used to be one time. Because that's the spider. That's what the spider, that's what the devil does. Suctions out the joy, the peace, the faith, the hope out of you. And the only thing you have left is the shell of what you used to be at one time. And that's the mission of the devil. I'm speaking in the Holy Ghost to somebody here today. That's the mission of the devil. To destroy you from the inside out. To dry you out spiritually. And when you become dry spiritually, prayer is not of importance anymore. So winning is not of importance anymore. Your relationship with God is not important. Church attendance is not important. Because the, the life and the spirit has been drained out of you by the spider named devil. Your anointing has been drained out. The presence of God has been drained out of you. The only thing you have left, left is the shell of what you used to be. People tell you, your children tell you, your husband, your wife, your spouse tells you, you are not the same person. What happened to you? What's wrong with you? Your body language in the service like today is like you don't want to be in the house of God. Your body is here, but your mind is somewhere else. You are only the shell of the spiritual men and women that you used to be. Because you let the spider, the devil, entangle you on those webs of pornography, in those webs of false religion, in those webs of, oh, you know what? I have a friend that goes to that church and they do whatever they want over there. They dress like one they dress, they go to place. And nobody says anything and you let that web catch you. When you know what's the truth. You know the truth. You know the right doctrine. You know what the Bible says. When your mind when your mind is polluted with philosophies of this world and then you get entangled and involved in things that you shouldn't, then suddenly the enemy begins to drain the precious life of God out of you. And so now everything is acceptable and nothing is seen anymore. Nothing is wrong. Everything is acceptable. The spiders... They are all are a beast of prey. They capture their victims in a different way. You know, there is a spider called the, the wolf the spider. <laughs> you know what he does? He chases his victims. The wolf. That's not the wolf, but that's the wolf right there. That's an ugly thing. That's an ugly spider. But he chases his victims. He goes after, he goes after, he goes after. And the devil is like that. He's after you. He's after your marriage. He's after your family. He's after your purity. He's after your sanctification. He's after your faith. He's after your money. He's after everything you have. And you're going to let it catch you? Ah, 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 ah. You better say no in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to let that wolf and spider catch me. I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to worship the Lord. I'm going to give it all to Jesus. There's another spider called the jumping spider. He, he has palms like a cat. He just kind of pumps him. On his victim, just like a cat, he jumps on you. And the devil sometimes is like that. You better be careful. That's why the Bible says you got to be alert. Because he's like a lion, a, 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 a lion is roaring. 
like a roaring, roaring lion. And he wants to jump on you. You better be careful. You got to be awake. You got to be alert all the time. You got to be filled with the spirit. You got to be filled with the word. You got to always be ready with all whole armor of God. Ready to fight. Ready to say, ah, ah, you cannot touch me. You cannot touch my family. You cannot touch my marriage. You cannot touch my relationship with God. And then there's another kind of a spider. It's called the crab spider. The crab spider. Look at it. It looks like a crab. Don't get him confused. Because some of you are already eating snake eggs omelets. Now don't confuse that as a crab. It's called the crab spider. And he disguises. See, this, is, this kind of spider has something in it. It disguises itself into the environment. It's kind of like the chameleon. They change its colors. If it's close to a green environment, she changes like green color. The same thing as a spider. It changes with the environment. It disguises. And the devil disguises. He disguises as an angel of light, the Bible says. He makes things look good, but the end are dead. You got to watch it. Oh, that girl, that girl might look good on the outside, but it might not be the right one for you. If it's not baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, that might not be the right girl for you. <clears throat> oh, you, you, you girl, you apostolic girl, you see this boy and you go crazy about him just because he's got some bigger muscles. And because he has a cute face. But if it's not filled with the Holy Ghost, Jesus then baptized, you better watch it because the devil disguises itself. And at the end, he shows the true colors. That's the crab spider. But almost all the spiders... The number one, the number one way to catch their prey is through web, through a web. Poisoning the body of his victims. Get them entangled in the web and draining the life out of them. And I'm telling you that when you don't get your mind renewed in the Holy Ghost, and this is what I want you to get here. You better get your mind renewed daily in the Holy Ghost. Pastor, you do it. You, you, I mean, of God, you walk with the Lord. Somebody sent me a text says, Pastor, pray for me because God hears you. He hears you prayers more than mine. <laughs> no, 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 that's not true. He hears all our prayers. I'm just as human as you are. I'm tainted just like you are. But you can see somebody here that does this daily. I renew my mind in the power of the Holy Ghost. You better renew your mind. You better cleanse your mind daily, daily, daily in the power of the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, this is so important. When you don't get your mind renewing the Holy Ghost. When you don't spend time in the Word. Read the Word carefully. Take your time reading the Word of God. When you don't spend time in prayer. And seeking the face of the Lord. And then the only thing that you, and the only thing that you feed your mind with. And your spirit with. Is with the philosophers of Hollywood. I know, I, I know you're not liking this, but it's fine. God called me to preach the truth. And that's all I'm going to do until I go to the grave. And I'm going to practice this truth until I go to the grave. And the only thing you feel in your mind is in your spirit. Last night, some of you, 
who knows, spend hours watching movies and who knows what. And that's all you do. And you come here on Sunday looking good. You're just a shell. No substance in your life. No power of God in your life. No anointing of God in your life. No faith in your life. You're just a shell. It's all you're filling your mind with. Philosophers of Hollywood and sports and worldly information and you waste your life. Listen, you waste your life in social media and the internet. You're getting a snake eggs in your head. And the enemy sets a spider webs to entangle your body. And once he got your door life, and once he got your body, he begins to drain the life that is in Christ Jesus out of you. So as a result, you praise is not as powerful anymore. You pray your life has completely disappeared. You walk with God as something that you only do it on Sundays. It's a religious activity, but there's no real passion. There's no real fire deep inside of your soul. So you don't have that authority. And you don't walk in the spirit, my Lord Jesus. That's why I can stay here today, open my mouth and preach with the anointing of God and with the authority of God because I renew in my mind daily. All of these people all around the world asking me to come and preach in the conference and speak to their pastor. You know why? Not because I'm a great preacher, because I'm not. But I'll tell you one thing that recognized it. Says there's something in you. There's something in you. Somebody told me yesterday, the director of that conference, there's something in you. And thank you for coming from the West Coast to give us something, a little something of you here in the East Coast. I'll tell you what it is. I spend time with my Lord. I renew my mind daily. I feed off the word of God. I'm not going to waste my life. I'm not getting any younger. I'm coming this morning with a burden in my soul. I'm coming to call this congregation to renew our sanctification, to renew our passion for the things of God. The sticky webs. Sticky webs of pornography. Sticky webs of liquor. Sticky webs of sexual perversion. Sticky webs of criticism, gossip, hatred. Today, sticky webs of a smoking marijuana. Because now it's legalized. And now, if it's a medical advice, you can do it. I'm not going to have some pat heads here in this church. And it's legalized. No, 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 no. You better watch it. Those are spider webs. And the devil wants to entangle you. Don't come and ask me those questions anymore. Why do you think? This is what I think about it. You come and ask me, you're not going to get a good answer. But you're not political correct. I don't care. This is the truth of God. You know what? The devil and sin will never show its veterans. Never. Because all his veterans are dead. Or dying from lung cancer, smoking cigarettes all their lives. Or cirrhosis to the liver. Or because all the liquor and drugs that they have taken into their system. The, the, the devil cannot show you his veterans. So I'm calling this whole church to a fresh consecration and sanctification and separation from sin and from the world. I'm calling to set some barriers in your life to keep the spider webs off and the snake eggs out. Oh, 
Oh, let me tell you something about the devil. The devil, every time he opens his mouth, he's lying. He is a liar. He is the father of all lies. And if he's telling you it's okay, if the devil is telling you it's good, it's all right, and you know the word of God says otherwise, the devil is lying to you. You better protect. Listen, somebody here today. Somebody maybe watch me, watching right now on the, on the webcast. You better protect and preserve your house. You better protect and preserve your family. You better protect and preserve your marriage. You better. If he, if he puts his poison in, he will drain the life out. You will be the walking dead before you know it. The prophet I said said, the problem is not that you just got a snake eggs in your head and a spider webs. And then he comes and fi- I'm going to finish my message with this. But then he really gets down to something even deeper. And says, and I hope nobody's playing on their cell phones. Not, not, not this morning because you, you choose young people to be playing with your cell phone and not catch it. Not, this is not the morning you need to do that. I'm serious this morning. Sin is destroying lives in this church. It's destroying marriages. And God told me, go out there and preach to what I gave about weeks ago. Today is the day. It's destroying the lives of young people. Putting a snake eggs of suicidal. Kill yourself. Finish yourself. There's no hope for you. Those are a snake eggs in your mind. Get those thoughts out of you. You are a child of God. You're precious to God. You got purpose. You got purpose in this world. Get those snakes eggs out of your mind. I know you're 13 years old. I know you're 14 years old. And pastor, you know what? You don't know what happened to me. Perhaps I don't know the whole story. But don't let the devil lay those snake eggs in your brain and tell you you're not good. You will never amount to anything in life. No, you got the Holy Ghost. You got the Word of God. You got the church. You got all of us here. Don't let the devil lay the snake eggs in your brain. Oh, shakato koriyanda la bhai. Oh, I feel the spirit of prophecy coming on me. I feel the authority of God in my life this morning. Boy, I, 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 if I see the devil. I, I, I fight with him. I'm so mad. Don't let the devil destroy your life. Don't let the devil destroy your family. Don't let the enemy destroy your marriage. Preserve your home. Preserve your family. Preserve your marriage. Preserve your relationship with God. And I'm going to finish with this because this is important. You can remain in standing, you can sit, it's fine. I'm going to be only five more minutes. But then he says this the truth, this, this really, this really got me deep. The truth had fallen in the street. Let me put it this way. Truth have been tripped up by liberal preachers today. Preaching a deluded gospel. That's what they're doing right now. Preaching a deluded gospel. Be happy, be happy, be happy. Doesn't matter what. That's all they're doing today. And the devil is laying his snake eggs on your brain. But and then the prophet says, but don't worry. He, I said, have that words right there. Don't worry. I just 
injected myself because when I was reading the text, my spirit said, spoke to me inside of me. Says, like a, the Lord would say, don't worry. Because the Redeemer, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, because the Redeemer will come to Zion and the truth is about to stand up again in this generation. The truth is going to take a force and it's going to stand up again. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place right now. I feel the truth is standing up again in this generation. I wish I had some people in this church that will help me to lead truth back on his feet. She has fallen, but we're going to pick up the truth and we're going to lift them up. We need preachers. We need pastors. We need ministers. We need saints that speak, that preach the truth and love. Preach the whole counsel of God. Because if we don't preach the truth, our congregations will begin to cook as they eggs. Omelets, and they get entangled with the things of the world and of the flesh and sinful practices. But if you want the answer to the snake eggs and the spider webs, you don't have to get a broom and try to get rid of the spider webs in your life. You don't have to. You don't have to try to stomp out of the snake eggs. Let me tell you how you get those things out of your mind. How you get to get rid of those those spider webs. Let me tell you how you just leave the truth up on his feet. And the Lord Jesus is the truth. And he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Somebody help me to leave truth up. Help me to leave the truth up in worship and in praise. Jesus, I lift your name up. You are the way. You are the life. You are the truth. I want to say to this congregation that Jesus is the solution to your problem. Is the answer to your problem. He is the solution to your disease. He is the one that can help you with that same problem that you have in your life. Jesus is the answer. And then he says, after he says, I'm going to live through that. He said this in verse 21, my spirit. My spirit that is up on you. In other words, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> First we have the truth, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Then we have the spirit, which is the Holy Ghost. Listen, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God, you can have it today. I would not walk out of this building. I will not walk out of this building Without the Holy Ghost in your life. If you have it, you need to be renewed. You need to speak with tongues all over again. If you don't have it, you can get it today, this morning. Don't live without it. Because if you live without it, you will not be able to withstand the attacks of the enemy. And to overcome sin and temptation and the desires of the flesh. My job here this morning, today... Is to preach you the truth. Because you shall know the truth. And truth shall set you free. Boy, I feel something in my spirit today. I felt it all day yesterday. I felt it yesterday so powerful in my life. And I'm feeling it today in the same way. It has not left me. The anointing has not left me. The spiritual authority has not left me. When I spend some time with my God, there's something that takes place inside of me. And I felt that today. And I sure hope that somebody is listening to what I'm preaching here today. Don't, don't live without the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. Renewing your mind. You must renew your mind. 
There are only three things. All the situations and problems of life, we can summarize it in three categories. All your problems either come from sin, and the other second thing is sorrow, and the third thing is death. Three things. Sin, sorrow, and death. Sin, sorrow, and death. And the answer to those three things that bugs you in life, that gets after you in life, that really cause you a lot of headaches, those three, the answer is in the Word of God. The answer to sin is right here, right now. Because if you confess your sins and you depart from it, he is faithful and, and, and righteous to forgive you of all of your sins and cleanse you from all of our righteousness. So the solution to sin is right here. I don't care what you are going through. I don't care what you sin problem. You can be set free today. It could be drugs. It could be alcohol. It could be situations. It could be girlfriends and boyfriends that are pulling you away from, from integrity, from purity. I want you to come to this altar today because the solution to your problem is here. And the solution is Jesus. And if you have sorrow, for sorrow, we have the word of God. It doesn't matter what kind of crisis you are facing. Our God has the power to calm the storms of your life. Right now, it's going to become a power on this congregation. I'm going to give the word of faith. And when I give that word of faith, I really want you to praise him. And if you did, you don't have to fear death here today. Somebody, while I was the plane was going to take off last night in New York, a pastor friend of mine says, man, I'm feeling weird. Man, I hope the Lord take care of you. I, I just began to kind of put some, maybe a little nervous when he was telling me. And I replied to him, I said, no, the angel of the Lord is with me. Do not worry. Amen. It made me feel weird for a moment. And I began to think negative. I said, why in the world is he saying these things? I'll tell you what, do not fear dead. The Lord Jesus says, I am the resurrection in life. He that believeth in me, though he's dead, you shall live. Somebody say hallelujah. So you can have freedom today. You can know purity again. You can know integrity again. You can know holiness and righteousness. You don't care what other young people are doing in school. You don't care how, how, how big or how great you are or how intelligent you are. You don't care. Don't let those drugs attract you. Don't let the liquor attract you. Don't fall on that spider web, please, young people. Adults, please, preserve your marriage. Preserve your family. This is so important. Because I want you to put the last scripture that I gave you because I want this congregation to see it and we're all going to pray together. I have a heavy, heavy burden inside of me. I want you to see what the Bible says in Second Peter 2 and 24. If it, after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they, I, there is the word right there. They are entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Boy, that's scary. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. Then, after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the proverb. The dog, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the pig of the salt that was washed to her wallowing in the mud of the mire again. My Lord Jesus, you better, you better listen here right now. If you turn your back to God and to this truth, it's you just like the dog that goes back to his moment. Back to the old things, the old lifestyle. My Jesus, I see people in my mind this morning. God is putting like a movie in my brain right now. I hope, I hope some way, somehow, this word, this message, and the Spirit of God can reach you. 
Because if not, you will be like a pig going back after it's been washed, after it's been put a little cloth in a bow tie and a little perfume or cologne in him, he's going back to the mire again. This morning, the Lord is calling. How many are here here to call of God? Do you hear the Spirit of God calling you? To a new consecration. I want parents. I want mothers. I want children. I want young people. I want old people. Come on, make a commitment. Commitment, commitment. Make a commitment. Come on. Come on, make a commitment. Right now, I want you to begin to pray right now. I want you to confess your sin. I want you to make a fresh commitment to God. All over this place. Come on. All over this place. All over this place. All over this place. Lift up your hands. Come home. Come home. Come home. Oh, that I'm weary. Come home. Oh, oh, that I'm weary. Come home. Come, come home. Lift up your hands where you are. I want the ministers to help me to pray. Pray for young people. Pray for parents. Pray, pray. Come on, help me. Help me to pray. Help me to pray. Help me to pray all over. Help me. Come on, help me. Help me to pray.